Hi, fifth graders. So I'm here today, ready to read chapter 16 of Tuck Everlasting. However, I wanted to talk a little bit about chapter 15. So in chapter 15, the man in the yellow suit arrived back at the Foster's house at around midnight to find them awake and very worried about Winnie because they didn't know where she was and what happened to her. So the man in the yellow suit explained that he knew where the kidnappers had taken her and that he would get her back, but only in, in exchange for, and he called it a trade, if they gave him their woods, he would go get Winnie back for them. So he seems to be like that's a nice thing for him to do is to help them get Winnie back. However, you have to think about if he's doing this just to be kind or is he doing this for some other reason? And so when he asked them to trade the woods for the information of, of um, getting Winnie back, that's something that um, has a couple of words um, that, that mean that. So one word might be bribery. It, it's called a bribe. Or it might be called blackmail too, if you've ever heard that word. So, and blackmail is kind of like, or bribing is very similar, is kind of like when, when I know that you really need or want something, but I will only give it to you or help you get it if you do something that I want. So typically when someone is bribing someone or using blackmail, um, they're not really being kind, they're, they're kind of doing it for selfish reasons. So chapter 16. Oh, and um, the man in the yellow suit um, requested that the Fosters go to get their local constable and that he and the constable would go and get Winnie and that the Fosters were to sit tight and stay home. Um, a constable is a, kind of an old fashioned word for a police officer at that time. The constable was fat and he was sleepy. He wheezed when he spoke and he spoke quite a bit as they started off, he and the man in the yellow suit. First, they roused me out of bed in the middle of the night after I've been out since sunup looking for that child. And now I suppose you're gonna try to run me all the way, he said sourly. I got to tell you, this horse of mine is none too strong. I don't have to hurry her as a rule, so most of the time it don't matter. Seems to me we could have waited till dawn anyways. The man in the yellow suit was as courteous as always. But the Fosters have been waiting since yesterday morning, he pointed out. Naturally, they're very upset. The sooner we get there, the sooner that child will be with them again. How come you're so deep in it? Asked the constable suspiciously. Maybe you're in cahoots with the kidnappers. How do I know? You should have reported it right away when you saw her get snatched. The man in the yellow suit sighed. But of course I had to find out where they were taking her, he explained patiently. I came right back after that. And the Fosters are friends of mine. They've um, sold me their woods. The constable's eyes went round. Oh, B, he said, what do you know about that? I didn't suppose they'd ever do a thing like that, friend or no friend. They're the first family around here, you know. Proud as peacocks, all of them. Family proud and land proud too. But they sold off, did they? Well, well, and he whistled in amazement. They thumped along in silence for a while out around the woods and across the starlit meadow. Then the constable yawned deeply and said, you ready to tell me how long this is going to take? How far we got to go? 20 miles north, said the man in the yellow suit. The constable groaned, oh, 20 miles. 
He shifted the shotgun that rested across his saddle and groaned again. Ugh, clear up in the foothills? That's a fair way, all right. There was no reply to this. The constable ran his fingers down the gleaming barrel of the shotgun. Then he shrugged and slumped a little in his saddle. Might as well relax, he wheezed, suddenly companionable. We'll be riding three, four hours. Still, there was no reply. Yes, sir, said the constable, trying again for conversation. It's something new for these parts, kidnapping. Never had a case like this before that I know of, and I've been in charge going on 15 years. He waited. You don't say so, his companion said at last. Yep, that's a fact, said the constable with evident relief. Maybe now there would be some conversation. Yep, 15 years. Seen a lot of trouble in 15 years, but nothing quite like this. Of course, there's a first time for everything, as they say. We got a brand new jailhouse, did you notice? Listen, it's a dandy. Give those folks nice, clean accommodations, he chuckled. Of course, they won't be there long. Circuit judge will be coming through next week. He'll send them off to Charlieville, most likely, to the county jail. Well, that's what they do for your serious crimes. Of course, we got a gallows of our own, if we ever need it. Keeps down trouble, I think, just having it there. Ain't ever used it yet. That's because they take care of the serious stuff over to Charlieville, like I say. The constable paused to light a cigar and went on cheerfully. What you got planned for that piece of foster land? You going to clear it? Put up a house or a store, maybe? No, said the man in the yellow suit. The constable waited for more, but there was no more. His sour mood returned. He frowned and shook the ashes from his cigar. Say, he said, you're kind of a close-lipped feather, ain't you? The man in the yellow suit narrowed his eyes. His mouth above the thin gray beard twitched with annoyance. Look here, he said tightly. Would you mind if I rode on up ahead? I'm worried about that child. I'll tell you how to get there, and I'll go on ahead and keep watch. Well, said the constable grudgingly, all right if you're in such a ding-danged hurry, but don't do nothing till I get there. Those folks are likely dangerous. I'll try to keep up, but this horse of mine, she's none too strong. Don't see as how I could get her up to a gallop even if I tried. That's right, said the man in the yellow suit. So I'll go on ahead and wait outside the house until you get there. The man in the yellow suit explained the route carefully, and then he dug his heels into the flanks of the fat old horse, cantering off into the darkness, where just a hint of dawn glowed on the edges of the hills far ahead. The constable chewed on the end of his cigar. Hmm, he said to his horse. Did you get a gander of that suit of clothes? Oh well, takes all kinds, as they say and he followed slowly along, yawning, the gap between him and the man ahead lengthening with every mile. Okay, so in chapter 16, um, the constable, who is a very talkative man, and the man in the yellow suit are riding off together toward the Tuck's house to get Winnie and to confront the Tuck's. However, the man in the yellow suit really doesn't want to talk a whole lot, even though the constable does. The man in the yellow suit doesn't. Hmm, I wonder why he doesn't want to talk a lot to this constable. So he tells the constable that he's going to ride up ahead and he won't do anything. He'll just wait outside until the constable gets there. So that's where we are. So it's the middle of the night right now and the tucks are sleeping and the constable and the man in the yellow suit are on their way. And that is chapter 16. I hope you enjoyed it.